In this video, we're going to finish up chapter 2 with uh, section 2.9 weighted averages. We're definitely not ending on an easy note. Uh, weighted averages are a little bit tricky to compute. Uh, they require a little bit of setup, but once you've got the, the details organized, then they're eh, manageable. So here we go, vocab first. Weighted average, what is it? First of all, each value in a data set is multiplied by its weight then these new values are average. So a normal average is you just take a whole bunch of numbers, you add them up, and you divide by how many numbers you had. In a weighted average, each number in the data set gets a certain weight that it's multiplied by. So some things carry a higher weight than others. Uh, one example of this is your grade book here at Grower School. So your homework category might be worth a certain percentage. Your test category might be worth a certain percentage. So each of those categories has a score but they're weighted differently and so to find your overall grade in this class you take a weighted average based on the categories and their weights uh, another type of problem that involves weighted averages is called a mixture problem so in these kind of problems you're in, you're mixing two or more parts together to make a new whole so say you're mixing some uh, lemonade you'll mix some lemonade mix with some pure water and you'll obtain a new mixture that has a different concentration so lots of example problems uh, will involve mixing two things together. All right, here we go. Uh, another type of problem is a uniform motion problem. So uniform motion you should also be learning about maybe in your science class. So for uniform motion, use the equation distance equals rate times time. Another way of expressing this equation is the rate or speed is distance over time. So speed or rate is distance over time is the same exact equation because you multiply the t on both sides. t comes up here. Rate times time equals distance. So anything involving distance, rate, and time is called a uniform motion problem. Uniform because you're going at constant speed. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So solving these kind of problems, the best way for me to do this is to show you some examples. Um, school is 12 miles away, and you get there in 20 minutes. What is your rate in miles per hour? So we take this equation, distance equals rate times time. We're asking for the rate. So we want to solve this for r. We divide both sides by t, and we get that the rate is the distance divided by time, which is what I had over here anyway. So now you can see where that comes from. Okay, So now we can plug in our numbers. Distance, 12 miles. And here by showing my units, right? This is called dimensional analysis, showing my units, uh, divided by time. Time is 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes but I wanted my answer not in miles per minute but in miles per hour so I need to convert minutes to hours so we can do this using what's called dimensional or what's called a conversion factor 60 minutes is one hour notice I put 60 minutes in the numerator because I need to cancel out with these minutes that are in the denominator so those minutes cancel with those minutes and now I have 12 divided by 20 times 60 and if I do that I get 36 miles per hour another way you could have done this was to first note that 20 minutes is one-third of an hour and you could have done 12 miles divided by one-third of an hour and remember when you divide by a fraction you multiply by the reciprocal so either of those will yield this final answer. Okay, so that's an example of a uniform motion problem. Distance, rate, and time. And just making sure that your units are proper. Distance is in miles. Time here is in hours. We had to convert it. All right, so general problem solving tips. Not specific to the rate problems, but all of these kind of mixture problems or, or whatnot. First, make a table to organize your data for each part of the problem. So if a problem involves multiple parts mixed together or multiple steps in a journey, you want to label everything you know in a table. And remember that the total of all the parts added together always, always, always has to equal the whole. So here's an example, weighted average. This is just like your, your gradescape, right? Suppose your homework category counts 40% and you have a 90 in the homework category. Your test category counts 30% and you have an 85 in that category. You have 100% in participation, but that's only counting 15% of your grade. And finally, you got a 90% on the final exam, which also counts 15%. What's your overall class grade? So I've rewritten the problem here, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make a table, and we're going to say um, 
category uh, weight points okay so first category homework I have a 90 percent so 0.90 because we convert it to a decimal excuse me <coughs> ah, excuse me uh, and that counts 40 percent so the weight is 40 percent sorry I made a mistake here the weight or percent of the total we're gonna put as a decimal this one we're gonna leave as a 90 percent okay next category we have an 85 and that category counts 30 percent so 30 percent point 30 next category uh, we have a hundred percent that counts point fifteen and the last category we have a ninety percent and that also counts fifteen so the total of all the weight should obviously add up to a hundred forty thirty fifteen and fifteen is a hundred or one point zero zero okay now we can add up all of our points so we multiply the category value by its weight to get the weighted average. So if we were just taking the average of all these scores, we would just take the average without having any weight factor. But we want to get the weighted average. So multiply 9 times 0.4, that's going to give you 9 times 4 is 36. 85 times 0.3, calculate it real quick, 25.5. And 100 times 0.15 clear 100 times oh stupid I don't need a calculator huh 15 and 90 times 0.15 90 times 0.15 is what 13.5 okay now if I add all these up I can get my total score 36 plus 25.5 plus 15 plus 13.5 equals hey it's a 90 percent who would have guessed I didn't know that actually I promise when I made it up I just picked random numbers so the weighted average is 90 well I add all my points up total I get 90 and then technically I have to divide by the total of uh, the weighted part which is exactly one so when you're doing your grades the weight is always one because it adds up to hundred percent so maybe this example it's a great example for Gradescape calculations, but it's not a great example overall of doing a weighted average because once we added these up, we just divided by one. So no change there. Normally you'd be dividing by the total of all the weighted part. I'm realizing right now as I explain this that if I was a student, it's quite possible I would be confused right now. So if this made sense to you, fantastic. If it did not make sense to you, don't worry too much. In class we'll do lots more examples. And I have one more example to do here on the board. So mixture problem. This one is a little bit easier and I've already set up the table for us. So lemon juice concentrate is 90% lemon juice. We want to make three gallons of lemonade. That's only 12% juice. How much pure water and how much concentrate should I use? So the amount of concentrate, I don't know. The amount of water, I don't know. The total amount I know, I want to have three gallons so I can fill that in okay um, the actual amount of juice in the concentrate let's put in uh, an X right here the amount of concentrate is going to be an X I don't know an unknown so the amount of water X plus the amount of water has to give me three so the amount of water has to be the total minus the amount of concentrate the three minus X does that seem reasonable? If I get three gallons total, three minus X, total minus concentrate equals water. Okay. How much juice is there in the water? Zero. How much juice is there in the concentrate? 90%, so 0.9. So the amount of actual juice that I'm getting from concentrate is the product of the volume of juice concentrate times the percent. So 0.9 x so I'm it's basically a weighted I get, it is a weighted average 0.9 is my weight x is how much I have so 0.9 x then over here 
I have actual juice zero. And how what percent juice do I want at the end? 12%, so 0.12, okay. How much actual juice is it here? Well, I have three gallons, and I know that my percent juice is 0.12, so if I multiply three times 0.12, I get 0.36 of actual juice. All right, now, none of the juice came from here. All of the juice came from here. So the 0.9x from right here plus the 0 from right here has to equal 0.36. So if I, that's nothing, right? If I divide by 0 0.9, divide by 0 0.9, I get x equals 0 0.36 divided by 9. 36 divided by 9 actually goes in evenly. That's, uh, what, 4? 0 0.4. So this means I need 0 0.4 gallons of concentrate. Okay, how much water do I need? 3 minus x. So water, 3 minus 0 0.4 equals 2.6 gallons of H2O. So if I mix 0.4 gallons of this 90% concentrate with 2.6 gallons of pure water, I'll end up with 3 gallons of 12% juice. Uh, okay, so if those don't make sense, like I said, they are a little bit tricky to kind of wrangle your mind around, and there's a lot of different variety of examples where if you solve one and it makes sense, you move on to a different one and suddenly it seems a little weird. We'll do a lot more examples in class, um, but I think you can see that we can use um, equations in algebra to definitely make this stuff manageable, um, although I would never say these are easy. Alrighty, see you in class.